Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to TITC 2021. Augmented reality AR and virtual reality VR could play an instrumental role in overcoming the pandemic led restrictions and at the same time offer new opportunities to engage customers. To decode the role of AR VR in addressing the challenges posed by the COVID pandemic, we are joined by Mr. Pradeep Khanna, Executive Director, Asia Pacific and CEO, VR AR Association, VR ARA, and Global Mindset. Ladies and gentlemen, to more, know more about our speakers, you can download show catalog from the upper tab on the right hand side of the screen called the handout bag. If you're ready, over to you, Mr. Khanna. Thank you very much, Sneha. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pradeep, touching base from Sydney in Australia. We are in the middle of a lockdown which has been going on for the last two and a half months and is set to continue for yet another month. But hey, is that something new? This is the new normal. There will be ongoing lockdowns as the vaccination picks up in different parts of the world and we will be reacting or innovating or adapting to the new normal. So, what is VR, AR, XR, MR and why is it making so much of a noise at this particular point in time? Let me initially talk to you about what is the difference between VR and AR. I get invited to speak on VR, AR all over the world. At the moment, I'm speaking at, on average, about one or two conferences a week. In 2019, I used to travel physically to different parts of the world and spoke at 27 international conferences. When I speak at these conferences, what I find is 70% people do not even understand the difference between VR and AR. I'm sure that the audience here today, there are lots of people who know about it, but let me kind of walk you through. Let's say that this was a live in-person event and I was in New Delhi and not in Sydney. And I was sitting in front of you or standing in front of you and talking to you. We would have been real people sitting on real chairs. On the other hand, if you want to get an experience of landing on the moon or Mars, can we do that? No, we cannot do that. So what do we do? We create an artificial or a virtual environment. And that experience that we create over there is called virtual reality. And there's a spectrum as you go from the real world to the virtual world. That is, you keep adding digital objects to the real world. And let's give you another example, which you must have possibly come across in the new normal on which a co companies like IKEA have been doing since 2013. Let's say that you wanted to buy a table or a chair and you had the catalog in front of you and the catalog had a QR code and with your mobile phone you scan the QR code for the table. A digital image of the table would come up in front of you. You would still be in the real world but a digital image of the table would come in front of you and you could decide whether you want to buy a round table, square table, black table, brown table, whatever it is. That is a classic example of augmented reality. By augmenting, we mean adding. So you are adding digital objects to the real world. As you go further down, you come to a stage where the digital content keeps increasing and until you come to a stage where it is a totally virtual environment and that is virtual reality. AR, VR have been around for the last 25 years. So why are we talking so much about it now? And what did, do we talk, understand by AR, VR, XR, MR? In the good old days, the entire spectrum as you go from the real world to the virtual world used to be called as mixed reality. Why? Because it was some combination of the real world and some combination of the digital world. However, post the new normal where there has been so much of an explosion in terms of take up of technology, where we are living in an ever pervasive technological driven world, where we live, learn, work and socialize in technology. 
what is happening is we have new concepts coming in called the metaverse what is a metaverse and for that i will ask you to see a movie ready player one by steven spielberg where he showcased a world called oasis which is now a symbolic version of what we call as metaverse a metaverse is nothing but a combination of the real world and the virtual world and all the realities taken together and the internet and so on and so forth it's a world in which you kind of oscillate between the real world and the virtual world and you can get experience from one world to the other you spend different times in different parts of the world depending on what you like and today we've got billions of dollars which are being spent on creating metaverse facebook is creating a metaverse microsoft is creating a metaverse epic games is creating a metaverse and so on and so forth let me also give you another perspective so we now talk in terms of mixed reality going right up to the way of metaverse called extended reality this is the overall arcing term which describes different forms of reality very often that i question that i ask people is you know what does the ecosystem consist of hypothetically let's ask you this how many companies do you think in india are offering vr ar xr mr solutions is it 5 is it 10 is it 100 let me tell you the number it is 2500 companies 80% of these companies are startups with headcount between 1 to 20 people although i've met companies with 100 200 300 people persons headcount but this is the typical profile and 75% of these companies are bootstrap or self funded so this is what the ecosystem is and the challenge is that nobody knows who's doing what in the ai vr ecosystem So if nobody knows, then which are the industries which are having a good take up of VR, AR? Number one is gaming and entertainment, but which is number two? It's education and training. Number three is health. Number four is real estate construction, architecture. Then you got defense, mining, travel, tourism, automobile, aeronautical, and so on and so forth. And when you look at what kind of functions are there. in ar vr marketing training field operations are some of the common functions which are being used in ar vr so you can clearly see that you know when you want to look at a ar vr scenario then there are a couple of dimensions one is the technology which can vary right from 360 to ar to vr to xr to multi sensory multi sensory means today we are talking of vr ar only in terms of visual but what about you know smell taste touch that's where the world is heading towards in the brave new world and the second dimension then becomes the industry that we are talking about you know whether it's financial services telecom health so on and so forth third is the function and the fourth is the geography why because different parts of the world are in different stages of development and in terms of the ecosystem so what works in australia or us may not necessarily work in india what works in india may not necessarily work in these countries and so on and so forth so the question really comes up is that is are we at the tipping point and the answer is no but then why are we talking about AR VR now it's because we are heading towards the tipping point in the next 2 to 3 years we are we have this brief window of opportunity to establish a brand and to be more knowledgeable about VR AR what are the key drivers when it comes to AR VR today why are we saying that the tipping point is going to be in the next 2 to 3 years it is because of 5G 5G takes away the latency 5G enables a lot of functionality to go to the cloud it enables a lot of collaboration and it's a game changer for VR AR like it is for IoT and other emerging technologies 
and we see that 5G will take about seven to eight years to come to full functionality. So we see a seven to eight year roadmap for VR, AR, out of which two to three years is the tipping point. And we also see that telecom companies will be big players in this ecosystem. If you would have noticed last year in India, Geo, Telecom, or what we call as Reliance, their XR arm launched smart glasses. What telecom companies are doing is they are looking at not only laying 5G at an infrastructure level, but they're also looking at offering AI VR content to the last mile. And once Geo goes into it, obviously in India, Airtel and Vodafone will also go into it. So this is where we see what is happening. And here in comes what I call that couple of things happening. I gave you an example of metaverse, but there are other examples go back to two or three months when we had a serious COVID situation in India, where people were struggling to get oxygen cylinders as well as to get hospital bed. A simple AR app, which, you know, help people assemble an oxygen cylinder at home has an impact to impact large number of people. Similarly, an AR app heat map telling you which are the high crime areas in a city has an impact to large number of people. So we have both the metaverse and simple AR apps which are going to be impacting or helping drive take up of VR, AR. So this is where the new normal is. And what you've seen is a tremendous you know, take up of VR, AR. In the case of consumers, people like try before you buy. If you want to buy something, you can try it on in an AR or a VR kind of environment. In, in business cases, remote assist where something can be assembled remotely without any skills being over there, doing a skills transfer with a subject matter effort. These are some examples which are just exploding. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, I end the keynote today. I can talk about it for days on together. I'm so deeply immersed into it. But back to you now and mark my words, a couple of years down the road, we will be meeting again and then talking about VR here in a different manner altogether. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Khanna. Before we go, though, there is one question in the Q&A. We'd like to open it for the Q&A. I would read out the question. What can we do to make India as R&D hub? IoT hub as or AR &D hub? hub? IoT or ARVR is not specified here. Does the government... So, let, let, so let me tell you what is happening or some of the things that we are doing to make India... I mean, a lot depends, you know, on what the ecosystem builds up or we are building up what we call as a national corridor. We are working to position India as a center for global delivery as just what happened in the case of uh, IT and, and BPO a couple of years ago. The challenge, of course, is that in the case of BP and IT, it used to be large companies who were customers and large companies who were the solution providers. But in the case of uh, IoT or for that matter in VR, AR or any of these emerging technologies, the small entity is collaborating with small entities. And then we are also looking at linking up these national corridors with Asia Pacific corridors and Europe corridors, because as uh, executive director of Asia Pacific for the VRAR Association, this is the largest association in the world with 70 plus chapters and 4,400 plus entities and thousands of uh, entities in our community. So there's tons of it and there are a whole lot of other skill building, you know, initiatives that we are working on, which is looking at one end industry, which is providing solutions, one end of industry, which is using solutions, you know, higher education or training providers and the students to develop a skill-based ecosystem. In the, in considering that time, this is what my response is and happy to take the question offline if the person so wants to do it. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We'd like to end the session. Thank you so much once again. Okay. You Thank you very much. Next session. Thank you.